In today's video, we're going to learn how to reduce the dimensionality of image data um, in a way that can maximize its potential for being used in supervised learning. And we're going to work on a problem that has been posted on an ML Pro screening exam for job placement. And on this question, we're given a set of handwritten digit images of size 8 by 8 so that means each image has 64 different variables in it and the goal of this problem is to reduce the dimensionality to be 20 or less from 64 um, and make the representation be maximally useful for supervised learning for predicting which handwritten digit it is so we're given as input the numpy array of all the images and as output we have to change it if we don't change it because of the restrictions of this problem we will get a syntax error um, and that's because um, we're supposed to return a two-dimensional vector whereas the input is three-dimensional so the input is number of samples by width times height and the output needs to be number of samples by 20 or some number less than 20 but greater than zero. So let's try PCA as our first approach. PCA is probably the go-to um, dimensionality reduction technique. At least it's the first one that you learn. And so let's just try that out and see what we get. It comes in scikit-learn, so it's pretty easy to implement. So from scikit-learn.decomposition, import PCA. Uh, we need to initialize a new PCA object, so PCA equals PCA, and the main uh, argument is the number of components of the representation, which let's just set to five to start out with. And then to get a modified uh, input representation, we can call PCA.fitTransform, which will first fit the um, representation to the data, and then the transform part will transform the input data into the new representation. So fit transform of the of the input. Um, last thing we need to do is PCA assumes a one dimensional vector as input already. So we need to flatten the original data. So we can do that with the reshape command in NumPy. And we'll reshape it basically to a size num samples times 64, um, but to use um, to use good coding practice, we'll just parameterize it using dot shape of one times x dot shape of two. Okay, so let's try this code, see what happens. Okay, so accuracy 15 or 16%, precision about 16%, recall about 16%. Let's see what happens. We're allowed to go up to 20 dimensions. We only specified five, so let's go up to 15 dimensions, see if that helps. And uh, it helps a little bit, but it's not so dramatically better that it. we don't know if it's just due to some statistical noise. Let's go up to the maximum dimensionality that we're allowed to for this problem, which is 20. See if that improves things. And kind of improves things, but not too much. So PCA is a linear dimensionality reduction technique. It's limited to finding linear patterns in the data. Um, since image data are very complex, perhaps PCA is not the best to use. Um, TISNY is a nonlinear technique. However, the scikit-learn implementation limits us in the dimensionality, so that's probably not an appropriate one to use here. Um, let's try SVD. Um, it's another popular technique using some linear algebra. Really easy to swap these out. We just um, the base code is the same, and we just switch the class that we import. So let's try truncated SVD, singular value decomposition, and uh, yeah, doesn't work so well. Um, so we could keep on trying many other dimensionality reduction techniques, but they're not going to end up working too well because we have image data. So we should probably brainstorm different approaches. There are a few other approaches that can work really well. One of them, which is pretty simple, is to just resize the image from 8x8 eight eight to 4x4, four 
flatten that and return the flattened output. Um, in that way, we might have some content loss, but the general structure of the input will be maintained. Perhaps that could be a good representation. It's worth trying at least. So if, it, if we're getting better than 20 percentile, we're doing good. So to do this, we're gonna use PIL, which is a popular computer vision library in Python. So from PIL import image and uh, and what we're going to do is create a new NumPy array um, to do this. So we could loop for each image in our vector, not vector, but in our matrix of images, our tensor of images. And first thing we can do is convert it into a PIL image object. So we can use the from array command to do that. Once it's converted, we want to resize the image so we can now use the dot resize method that comes with the image PIL object to resize it to four by four. We choose four by four because that gives us 16 dimensions. If we chose five by five, that would go to 25, but this problem specifies that we need to have no more than 20 dimensions. So five by five is not going to work. Four by four will work. So let's try that. And um, finally, now that we have the resized image, we can add it to our new X array list. And then uh, say that our X variable is um, a NumPy array from, uh, from this new X variable. One thing we need to do is um, if we're gonna do this NumPy conversion, the resized image needs to be NumPy as well. So we can use the NumPy as array function for that. And good, now we should get all the types figured out. So let's hit run, see what this gives us. We keep the flattening code at the end. And wow, notice that accuracy, precision, recall are all now in the 89, almost 90% way better than the sub 20% performance we were getting with the regular dimensionality reduction techniques. And so the lesson here is that it's not, if you wanna reduce the dimensionality of the input, especially for image data, it's maybe not always good to use these linear algebra based techniques like SVD or PCA. Sometimes uh, just a simple resizing of the image could be a better dimensionality reduction technique. Um, I'm not going to demo this here, but what would probably be the best technique if we wanted to get into the high 90s performance is apply some sort of representation learning, for example, by training a CNN and using an uh, intermediate layer as a representation, or using some clever self-supervised learning approach where, for example, you are um, taking random uh, portions of the image, masking it out, and then predicting um, what goes in that image or predicting uh, shuffling different portion of the image and predicting what the shuffle is. Other techniques where you can learn a good representation of the data and use that representation to then do supervised learning. So I hope this video was helpful um, and educational. Uh, this is a very important problem in machine learning in general. How do you get a good representation? And so um, yeah, many more of these problems to come. And looking forward to seeing your creative solutions. There's probably solutions that I didn't outline that you could come up with as well. And I'd be very enthusiastic to see what you have. So post your solutions in the comments below, post them on ML Pro, and I'd be excited to see how you do. Thanks for watching.